Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Government released its sixth industrial policy action plan this week. Terence Creamer joins me to unpack the key areas of emphasis. Hi Terence. Hi. Government is emphasizing manufacturing, but things remain difficult for industry. Can you explain this dichotomy? Yes, you know, it seems the more we talk about industry, industrialization and manufacturing, the, le the less it shows in terms of the, the facts and figures that come out on a quarterly basis in terms of production and output and employment. But I think the emphasis here is that South Africa has been going through a protracted period of really deindustrialization since we now into our 20 years of the new South Africa. Um, and basically after that period, you know, we changed the architecture of our economy. We had a lot of industry which was protected behind tariff walls. We had a lot of industry that was set up basically to tap into import substitution uh, opportunities which were really there because there was a sanctions period that uh, South Africa went through. So we had a liberalization period and we had a, a big deindustrialization over, over the last uh, 10, uh, 15, 20 years. And we, s we see that in the jobs numbers, we see that in a, a number of areas of product production. But uh, there has been an emphasis over the last few years to try and rebuild our manufacturing base. But that coincided uh, with the Great Recession. And during that period of 2009 of our own recession, we lost a million uh, jobs, 200,000 of which were in the manufacturing sector. So it was disproportionately affected. So the, the question was, you know, is this industrial policy and all this talk about industrialization really worth anything? And I think the view that the minister, Rob Davies, um, uh, suggested this week is that without having the interventions that have been made since over the six uh, industrial policy action plans or RPAPs, it probably would have been a lot worse. And uh, th that seemed to be reflected in what industry through the manufacturing circle said, that we do need a sort of coherent, coordinated national agenda around industry to sustain it. And that, yes, it is tough, but there is a plan. And without that plan, things might have been a lot worse. And what are some of the current issues that are given priority in the current version? Well, I think the, one of the big shifts in emphasis, it's always been there, but I think being emphasized a bit more is on exports and growing our export economy. Um, I think the, what has happened is that South Africa has developed a fairly chronic cr uh, current account deficit. And that's a lot to do with the fact that we're exporting a lot less uh, uh, than we are importing. And you know, we have to import because we've got these big infrastructure programs that, that rely on imported capital components and we need to build those. But on the other hand, we also need to raise our export game. And we're finding that difficult. Uh, we've had uh, protracted strikes in certain sectors. We've had a lot of disruption. And the, 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 the focus now is, is, is trying to you know, stabilize the, the labor environment. That's going to be difficult because we're going into some new wage negotiation seasons in the manufacturing sector. The mining sector, as we know, has been highly disrupted by um, by uh, industrial relations activity with the strike in the platinum sector going for 10, 11 weeks now. So it is a difficult ask, but I think putting a, the spotlight on exports is a key theme. And part of that is saying that it's not so much when we support uh, manufacturers and support new sectors about picking winners, but rather exports can show a way of weeding out losers. So. If you are able to export, it shows that you've got an international competitiveness to you. Um, obviously, some of these companies will be supported through incentives, etc. that won't last forever. But beyond those incentives, if you can show that you're penetrating export markets, then you can show that you are worth supporting in the sense that you are a competitive industry that can stand on your own two feet eventually. And I think that that is part of the why there's this focus in the new IPAP on exports. And uh, I think there's also this underlying reason that we really need to address this current account deficit, which is weighing on, on this economy. It's also become a major risk factor. I think we saw again this, um, the IMF downgrading South Africa's growth outlook. And some of that related to the industrial relations disputes, the labor problems that we're having in the export sectors, so that South Africa is not really going to earn the foreign exchange that it was initially hoping, as we can see with uh, what's happening with platinum. So I think that's one of the reasons. The other uh, points of emphasis, rather than it's not really a new, new, these are not new thoughts, but it's really shifting our focus, 
is again on the infrastructure program and trying to lever leverage that more and more for industrial opportunities. We see that recently there was this big um, tender uh, award or, uh, across four companies for locomotives there. A big part of that is going to be localization. And there's going to be, I think, integrated into every public procurement some sort of local content rules uh, and regulations. And uh, those are going to be embedded, I think, more and more to try and build industry around the infrastructure program and around public procurement generally. And then, of course, there's this uh, perennial issue of beneficiation. And the action plan this time uh, puts out a, a few more detailed steps around what government is wanting to do in the area of beneficiation. Again, there, I think we've got this impediment of electricity shortages, which makes it quite difficult. But as we see more and more people are saying now is that, you know, once Madupi and Kusile come on, we should have quite a lot of, or quite s some sufficient capacity to support beneficiation for some period before we, I suppose that capacity gets taken up. So that's another uh, point of emphasis. And then I think looking at the industrial incentive regime, you've got the Industrial Development Corporation and then you've got the DTR that, that the, the, you know, uh, deploys these incentives every year and looking for greater coordination between the two so that we really get maximum bang for the buck and also getting much more reciprocity built in to the incentive programs. So I think those are not new points, but more uh, you know, p points of emphasis. And do you think the Department of Trade and Industries efforts will pay off in the long run? Well, that's, <laughs> that's the, the big question. You know, industrial policies are not necessarily popular, but everyone has them. Some people have them on paper, and South Africa has decided to put these on paper and to be quite transparent about the way we go about our industrial policy. Others say that they don't have industrial policy, but then go about practicing quite aggressive industrial policy in the form of uh, protection for their local industries or through local content or procurement rules. So industrial policies are, are really there. They're sometimes transparent, they're sometimes not. Whether the South Africa's industrial policy is going to deliver um, is still an open question. And the, the, the problem is it's very hard to measure. You've, you know, we've really only been on this path for a short period. And these are very long-term projects, and you can only really measure them over decades to see whether the impacts have been made. But I think the, the general theme is correct, that South Africa can't rely purely on exporting raw materials um, or low-value added manufactured products. We need to try and move up the value chain. We need to try to diversify this economy. We need to embrace new industries, and we need to you know, get onto uh, the into the supply chains of global manufacturing industries. So I think it's the right, strategically it's the right thing. It's not difficult though, it's messy, it's lumpy, and uh, to, to measure the gains, I think it's gonna, you're gonna have to take a long view rather than a short view. And that is the difficulty uh, of assessing the industrial policy action plan. But I think it's, you know, the, given where we are uh, um, in our economic uh, recovery, the fact that there is this emphasis and plan, I think, gives manufacturers some comfort. And I think that uh, given the, the difficult headwinds that they face, to have uh, the, um, the, the government in some ways boxing in their corner, I think is quite helpful. Thanks, Terence. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.